Did you pack those bags yourself, sir? Yes, I replied, locking eye contact with the customs officer for as long as possible. And what is the purpose of your trip? Business, I replied, again, making eye contact. Are you carrying anything in your bags that would cause you to break out into a sweat if I were to look inside? He asked, looking intently into my eyes. Despite having nothing to hide, it took all of my nerve not to look away or blink and to maintain unflinching eye contact. No, I said, surprised at the slight tremor in my voice. He paused and with a final penetrating stare, waved me on. Now this is a typical exchange that we encounter every day at borders or when being questioned by somebody in authority. A series of easy questions to which we know the answers allows them to calibrate our body language, followed by a difficult question designed to elicit a change if we decide to lie when answering it. Even when using techniques such as this, it is still very difficult to detect if somebody is lying. In fact, Former FBI agent John Navarro rates the chances of successfully spotting a lie at 50% at best. You may have heard that eye movement can indicate if somebody is lying. If you watch their eyes when someone responds to a question and their eyes look up and to the right, they are accessing the left side of the brain, concerned with facts and what is truthful. Eye movement going to the left i.e. their right, suggest they are accessing the creative side of the brain associated with constructing a lie. Now, while some research suggests that eye movement can reveal lies, this is not infallible, as some people are cross-wired, especially if they are left-handed. So a key aspect of effective negotiation is developing our ability to spot when our opponent is lying. Despite the challenges I've outlined, detecting lying can often be straightforward, but that requires us to tune in to certain clusters of signals from the other party. Here there are five things that you can do. Number one, watch for involuntary body movement. Our brains have evolved to automatically protect us without being aware it is happening. Our unconscious brain will actually try and prevent a lie because it believes that it's bad for us. Our unconscious brain wants to raise a hand to our mouth as if to stop the lie coming out. Yet our conscious brain is trying to sit still in order to pull off the lie convincingly. This is the result of this inner conflict and is likely to be some involuntary movement somewhere in the body, perhaps a slight arm movement, perhaps a shifting on the seat, maybe a touching of the nose, and so on. Don't forget the eyes. Although never 100% reliable, don't rule out involuntary eye movement, but be sure to calibrate the person first during the chit-chat before the negotiation starts. Ask questions about their vacations or their company so that they will need to recall information. Again, look for clusters of repeatable responses, not just one single action. Number three, listen to the voice and what they say. We might not be able to detect specific microtremors, but sometimes the voice may sound slightly different. If we listen carefully for this, we will begin to hear it. Listen also for what is said, as without realizing it, people will attempt to bury a lie in a sentence by overemphasizing or by overemphasizing it with embellishments. Of course I love you has two additional words that provide a necessary embellishment to I love you. Number four, overcome trust. When we negotiate, we must hold fast to the principle that we cannot be certain of anything. In fact, I know a number of very capable negotiators whose default position is to assume that pretty much everybody is lying most of the time. Number five, do your homework. The better informed, the stronger our position, and the more we know for certain, the harder it is to slip a lie past us.